All right, so uh, Physics 131, this is the first lecture of uh, Chapter 4. Um, this is the chapter of motion. I'm going to put myself down here there. Uh, this is a chapter about motion. Um, this is where we actually dive into applying all the tools that we've been developing to uh, learn something about the world around us. That's what physics is, is uh, using the tools of mathematics to understand the world around us. So um, the very first thing, uh, as I say in my physics class, is that you notice when you start investigating <laughs> the world uh, is that there are objects, right? Things exist. That's pretty basic. Um, and we start talking about that, you know, mass and the difference between mass and force and weight. But another very, very basic starting point, um, which makes sense to begin with, is observing that things move, okay? Their motion happens. And if you want to describe that motion, one of the very first things you notice is that, uh, is that the, I'm going to go full screen there, <laughs> is that there's a difference between just talking about how fast something is moving and talking about the direction that something's moving in. And if, you, if that sounds familiar to you, that's for a good reason. We've been talking about something called a vector, which has both a magnitude and direction, and that's exactly what we need to describe the actual motion of an object, right? Because of course, if you look at this speedometer, right, it's like, okay, Right now, it doesn't seem like the, the car is moving, but uh, if, it, if the needle went up to 40 miles per hour, you know it's moving. But if you want to know, okay, great, it's moving, but where is it going to end up, right? If we want to make predictions, which is what the business of science is all about, is making predictions. Where will something be in 10 seconds? Where will it be in 5 seconds? Uh, this is a, uh, applicable to anybody who gets in a car because the question about, let's say you have to slam on the brakes. Here's an interesting question. Where will you be in the next three seconds? Will you be <laughs> uh, beyond where you had to stop? And in other words, are you going to hit the, the car in front of you? So uh, again, just knowing the speed is not enough to really predict what's going to happen. Uh, you need to know the direction as well. So we need to make a distinction that one of the first things that we define is, is speed, the rate at which you're covering time, uh, covering distance rather, so distance traveled divided by time to move that distance. Uh, but it's a scalar, it's just a number. It doesn't tell you anything about the direction. So um, at this point we say, okay, speed divided by distance, I'm sorry, distance divided by time uh, will give you something called speed. But we could also take the displacement and divide by time. What is that going to give us? Well, that will give us something called velocity. So um, again, just a reminder, if I start at this point here in the diagram, I can take a path where I go along A and then I go along B, end up at this point. Uh, the distance traveled is the length of A plus the length of B, naturally. But the displacement is this vector so distance traveled is just a number, but if I ask what is the displacement, what a quantity, in this case a thing, a vector, what, how do I describe my change in position? A number is not going to cut it. It's a number is not enough. So this vector c describes your change in position. It tells you here's where you started and there's where you ended up. Okay. All right. So velocity is the rate of motion in a particular direction. Okay, rate of motion in a particular direction. That's how we're going to define it. There are kind of higher levels or layers of defining velocity, but this is sort of a good starting point um, because it's a vector that rep not only represents speed but indicates the direction. So if my average velocity here is the uh, displacement divided by time. Okay, again, displacement, not the same thing as distance. Again, the displacement C divided by time will give you velocity. But distances A plus B will not give you velocity. Right. Okay, so um, we, kind of, we kind of simplify things a little bit by saying, okay, um, let's, let's just 
look at motion or movement where the displacement is really just the distance covered moment by moment, right? Um, with the direction. So here's a good example of that. Let's look at this. So um, I'm thinking maybe I should move myself up here. There we go. So here's an illustration of a car traveling at a constant velocity of 10 meters per second to the right. And you can't call it velocity unless you specify the direction. Notice that the displacement is 10 meters every second. So in one second it travels 10 meters, another second it travels another 10 meters to 20 meter mark, okay? In the, the direction to the right. So um, that velocity, okay, uh, if you had just a total of 30 meters in the rightward direction uh, divided by 3 seconds, you can get a velocity of 10 meters per second to the right. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, if we have an automobile traveling 160 kilometers, 160 kilometers in 2.0 hours, what's the average velocity? Well, we don't have any information about the direction, okay? So the average speed will just be the distance divided by the time, okay? So this is kind of confusing a little bit because S is really a displacement. So we don't really have a direction to supply here. It's really, uh, S should stand for displacement, but if all we have is the magnitude of the displacement, okay, then we say, okay, uh, that is, that corresponds to a, the magnitude of the displacement corresponds to a distance of 160 kilometers divided by two hours and gives us the magnitude of the velocity, okay? So the magnitude of the velocity is what we call speed when, um, or in this case, average speed, right? The average speed um, if, is 80 kilometers per hour because all we have is this information that it's traveled 160 kilometers in two hours, okay? So here's where things get a little confusing because, uh, you know, it, it could this could be a 160 kilometer circle and you get back to zero where you started, your displacement would be zero. So technically your average velocity is zero. <laughs> That's confusing. So let's just simplify things and say, okay, in these examples, we are being given the magnitude of a displacement vector, okay? taking the magnitude of the displacement vector and calling it distance will give us an average velocity. And the magnitude of that average velocity, we don't know the direction because we're not given that, the magnitude of the average velocity is 80 kilometers per hour. Okay, all right. So let's take a look at this. An airplane flies 3,500 miles in five hours. Find its average speed. Again, we're assuming this is this value, 3,500 miles, is the magnitude of a displacement vector, okay? That it underwent a displacement of that magnitude in five hours. So technically, this is a velocity, because it's displacement divided by time, uh, and the magnitude of the, of the velocity we're going to call the average speed, okay? So, um, this is, right, this is where they talked about the average speed is in one sense just the total length of the path traveled, but that's not the sense we're using in these examples. This is the sense we're talking about, the average speed being the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, all right. And again, so again, if you have good, if you have questions about this, you say, wait, 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 you know, this 160 kilometers could be a circle and our net displacement could be zero. True, that is true. Uh, in these examples, we are assuming this is the magnitude of the displacement vector, which means you did displace, you did undergo a displacement of that distance. Okay, so see this, describing motion actually has some subtleties. There's some complicated things that we uh, need to work out with respect to just simply describing motion, which is the starting point of physics. Okay.
Um, here's another example. Find the velocity of a plane that travels 600 kilometers due north in 3 hours and 15 minutes. So we have the displacement, okay, we have uh, the direction now, we have the time, we convert time to a number of hours, a decimal number of hours, we've got three significant figures in each value. The average velocity now, uh, this formula, this equation gives us the magnitude, and if we have the direction, we supply the direction, and then we can state the velocity. The velocity is 185 kilometers per hour due north. Okay. Um, so, that's useful, knowing how to describe uh, having moved, right, change your location, and describing the rate at which you're changing your location. That is velocity. That's very useful. What do we use it for, though? Um, this is one of the first things we use it for. Okay, navigation when our reference frame, when the um, material, the medium around us is moving, can get very difficult, right? Uh, so, for example, move this down here, right? Paddling a canoe into a headwind, whoa, uh -oh, right? Normally, you just, instead of water paddle canoe, you've got a, dis a, a displacement you undergo, occurs in a certain amount of time, uh, you've got a velocity, great. But what if the, uh, the wind is pushing against you with a certain speed, adding a certain velocity to you, how do you work out what you're resulting in that word resulting should sound familiar how do you work out what your resulting velocity is how do you predict what the actual change of position is going to be if you're paddling like crazy and then there's this wind blowing in one direction or another okay that's physics physics allows us to calculate this another example is the flight of an airplane in which a crosswind uh, is pushing you in one direction or another it doesn't have to be headwind tailwind it could be any in any direction Good question. How do we predict what our chain of position is going to be? How do we predict what our actual velocity is going to be then? Well, uh, if you want to do that, if you want to describe this motion now in a somewhat more complicated situation, you need vectors. So let's take a look at this. A uh, plane is flying due north at 90 degrees at 265 kilometers per hour, encounters a wind from the east. So if it's from the east, take a look at the diagram it's blowing towards the west, right? From the east is towards the west at 55 kilometers per hour. What is the plane's new velocity with respect to the ground and standard position? Okay, this is something that's important. You need to know, right? Even if you're just a little, you know, kind of, you, you've got a hobbyist plane, uh, remote control plane, anything, um, you do in one sense, either intuitively or uh, with your instrumentation, you have to figure out what is the effect of adding the wind velocity to your plane velocity going to be? Okay, this is how we figure it out um, in calculation, right? This is how we predict exactly what is going to be. First, you graph the plane's old velocity as the y component. Okay, so this, the black vector was the plane's velocity with respect to the ground, right? It goes straight up. To which you add the wind velocity. Wind velocity in this case is an x component. Hey, we've done that before, right? We've got an x component, a y component. Uh, we take the tangent of the y over x. Now, uh, notice I'm going to do this a little bit differently because this is in the negative x direction. So if you just take tangent of 265 over negative, okay, and then you're going to get negative 78.3, and then add 180 degrees, you'll get 101.7. Okay, so do it our way, make this negative um, to find the right angle. This is how you find the magnitude. You take the x component, the y component, square them, take the square root. Notice, even if it's negative, it's inside that parentheses, it's going to get squared, turn positive, add to this value squared, and give you a certain value of uh, the um, resulting speed. Remember, we're using the version of speed now, which is the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, this is the magnitude of the velocity vector. So that's how we make this prediction. With a little bit of math, like we've learned, okay, we can say uh, if we fly in this at this rate in still air, but then we encounter this headwind, we will be moving precisely in this direction, right, 101.7 degrees with precisely that speed. It's very useful.
Okay. All right. So I'm actually going to uh, do one more of these examples. Um, these kind of get complicated. Actually, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm going to stop before example five because example five is very complicated. And I'm going to do it on the board on a separate video. So this is just going to be chapter four, part one. We'll see you in the next video.